Hello, welcome to the Submarine Force Museum. I'm Commander Brad Boyd, Director of the Museum and Officer in Charge of Historic Ship Nautilus. Today I'm going to be talking about the 5 inch 25 caliber deck gun that you see me sitting at right now. Now this gun, first off I'll uh, move a little bit because when I go pick the camera up I won't be able to do this. So this gun was used on board submarines uh, from late 1943 uh, through 1945. It started its life actually as an anti-aircraft gun for cruisers um, in the late 1930s and then uh, uh, was also used on board some battleships and aircraft carriers until they came up with the 5 inch 38 caliber gun um, and uh, it was better at anti-aircraft and so they switched to that, removed these and started putting them on submarines. And then in 1944 they actually had purpose built uh, versions of this for submarines. This particular gun comes off of USS Flasher. Um, now, USS Flasher is, uh, is noted as the submarine, U.S. submarine with the most tonnage sunk during World War II, 100,231 tons. Not to be confused with total number of ships, that was actually done by, uh, that record's held by USS Tautog with 26, um, but total, uh, most tonnage sunk was USS Flasher. And actually, if you wanted to see even more of Flasher, if you just go down the street, uh, you'll see the uh, Connecticut uh, World War II submarine memorial, and it has the conning tower for Flasher, uh, as part of that memorial. So you can actually go see that, see the conning tower, and then come here and see the deck gun. So, um, but with that, I'm gonna hold for a second as I uh, shift to the camera uh, and, and take you around. Uh, but one other point of clarification, so this would not have been the uh, anti-aircraft gun for the submarine, this would have been the deck gun. We would have used a, a 40 millimeter Bofors uh, automatic cannon. That would have been the uh, anti-aircraft weapon uh, for the submarine. So this was, uh, while well, started life as an anti-aircraft gun, um, ended up as a submarine deck gun. And uh, go grab the camera here in a second and uh, give you some close-up points. All right, so first thing, uh, five inch 25 caliber, what that means. So five inches, let me lower the gun here for a second, so. All right. The so five inch refers to the diameter uh, the, of the projectile that can go through the gun. The 25 caliber refers to the length. And the way you figure out what that means is you take the five inch diameter of the, of the uh, projectile that can go through, multiply it by 25 for the caliber. So five inches times 25 is 125 inches or 10 feet and five inches. And that is the length of the barrel. Now the barrel doesn't stop right there. The barrel goes from obviously the tip here all the way down back through to the edge of the breech. So that's the length of the barrel. So, but that's what that means. If you ever hear anything, so five inch 25 caliber is a five inch, uh, 125 inch long barrel. Uh, the five inch 38 caliber I mentioned before would have been a five inch uh, diameter barrel with a 190 inch uh, uh, length of the barrel. So but anyways, that's what that is. Right here, you'll see what looks like springs. It's exactly what they are. So this helps absorb the recoil from the gun when it fires. Uh, it gets mounted to the deck down there. Um, and then it has sights. So we'll go over who sits where in a second, but I have a sight here and a sight over here. Now this is an eight man gun. This is where the other sight would mount, right, right here. So this is an eight man team to run, to run this gun. You'll have the trainer sitting right here, working the hand wheel just like we had, just that they've been lost over time. We don't have them anymore. Um, but he would sit here, so that's the trainer. And he turns the gun left, right. And then you have the pointer sits at this station right here. And he moves the gun up down, as you just saw. And then he has a foot pedal right there. And that connects, there'll be a mechanical connection down there, connects to that wire, which then traverses up and over. Here's the wire here, goes into the breech of the gun, and that's what actually detonates the charge to actually send the gun down range. You would have a sighter who stands right behind the, po the uh, pointer here. So the sighter would work this right here. And so as you, hopefully you can see the numbers there. So what that does is he can sit there and go, hey, we're gonna be shooting at this range, and I want this angle of, of uh, um, deflection. And so therefore the sights get tuned to that so that what you actually point at is where the barrel actually sends the round. So that's three people working the gun that way. You'd have a gun captain who overall supervises the team. And then you'd have two loaders and you have two ammo handlers. So the second loader would take the ammunition from the handlers, pass it to the first loader. The first loader sets the mechanical safety so the gun cannot fire. 
puts the round into the chamber, closes the breech, makes sure everybody's clear of the back of the gun, releases the safety, and uh, the gun's ready to fire. So that's the first and second loader. The handlers would be on this side, uh, and they would have, one of them would have asbestos gloves on to catch the spent round, because it's obviously very hot when it comes back out. So he catches the spent round uh, so that they can reuse the shell, uh, repack it with gunpowder, repack it with a new round, um, which is a lot, takes up a lot less space than extra shell casings as well. So they would take that down below to repack, repack the rounds. So one would catch the round, and then both of them, depending on where they are in the loading process, would unload or unpackage the uh, sealed up rounds because once you package it up, you'd put it into a seal so that you don't expose it to moisture, therefore dudding your round. And then they would pass it to the loader, and loaders would pass it around, and off it goes. And that's how the operation of the gun actually happened. So, um, but that's the five inch 25 caliber deck gun. Uh, we switched to this. It used to be a three inch or four inch de uh, deck gun. That's what was traditionally in the submarine force. But towards the end of the war, we needed a deck gun with a little more punch because we were shifting more and more to deck gun attacks vice torpedo attacks because there weren't as many large targets to warrant a torpedo anymore. And there definitely weren't as many targets that had the deck gun. We weren't going up against a battleship or a destroyer. We're going up against the merchant ships. We're trying to deny the uh, Japanese islands um, um, the supplies. So we went to the five inch deck gun to take on the small merchants, the sampans, and like that, that are running cargo uh, from China and Korea to Japan uh, and, 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 and supplying the Japanese war effort that way. So, that said, five inch 25 caliber deck gun. I um, hope you enjoyed today's tour. Thanks for coming along.